Hello, everyone. This is Jennifer Kumar from Authentic Journeys. It is 3.25 p.m. in Kochi on Sunday, November 1st. And as you can see here, using timeanddate.com, it's 1.55 a.m. in the morning, Alaska time. So the purpose of this video is actually to demonstrate fallback, the end of daylight savings time, as well as discuss some tips on timekeeping that's useful for when you're working in remote teams, distributed teams that actually have locations across various time zones. Of course, most of the people who are probably listening to this video work between US time zones and Indian time zones, hence why I'm focusing on daylight saving time and U.S. versus India time zones because this would be of interest to most of the people who normally follow the Authentic Journeys blog at AuthenticJourneys.info. So the U.S. actually has six time zones when we include Alaska and Hawaii. Within the continental U.S., in the continental U.S., I'm, I'm mouse-overing the continental U.S. right now, that has four time zones. So that would have Eastern time zone where maybe a representative city is New York City, Central time zone, representative time zone, Chicago or Bentonville, Arkansas, etc. The third time zone is mountain time zone and that would have places like the Grand Canyon or Salt Lake City, etc. And the fourth time zone is Pacific time zone with places like Seattle, home of Bill Gates, Microsoft, we all know that. And of course, San Jose, Silicon Valley, and all of those places on the West Coast. Alaska actually is the fifth time zone in the U.S. So if, for instance, it's 12 o'clock in New York, 11 o'clock in Chicago, 10 o'clock in the Grand Canyon, 9 o'clock in California, 8 o'clock in Alaska, and 7 o'clock in Hawaii. So Hawaii also has its own time zone. Hawaii does not participate in daylight saving time, but most of these places, including continental U.S. and all of Alaska, do. So there are some exceptions to daylight saving time, especially places in Arizona and New Mexico, I believe. And none of the U.S. territories actually participate in the time change, such as Puerto Rico and some other um, countries over in this side and other countries around the world that are U.S. territories. So as we near the 2 a.m. mark in Alaska, um, a lot of interesting commentary to build up your excitement for the time change. So normally in the springtime, we call it spring forward because when it gets to 1.59, automatically it changes to 3 o'clock after the next minute is over. And that's in another exciting video that I'm sure you're just going to be on the edge of your seat with anticipation to watch that I'll link in this video. Now in fallback or end of daylight saving time, when it gets to 159.59, it will actually go back to 1 o'clock. I know, it seems strange, because when we look over here at the Kochi time or the India time, India only has one time zone, this will not change. So we can even see in, in this website, there's lots of interesting apps that they show you between the difference between the different time zones and even India time zone where you're located or wherever you're located and the time zone or the t place that you're looking at here. So we have about 23 seconds left until the daylight saving time changes. And of course, um, Alaska is way up here in the northwest of the U.S. And I don't know how many distributed teams would be up here. A lot more people go to the continental U.S., especially eastern, central, and Pacific time zones. So now we're back to 3, 2, 1, 1 o'clock. See, it didn't go to 3 o'clock. It went to 1 o'clock. So I know that's very exciting stuff, right? But a lot of people get confused about this because actually the time, the clock itself has changed in the U.S. during all these different time changes. Whereas in India, you can see no change at all. And here we can use this app here. We can see 
all the different time times in all the different time zones. In fact, I wish I had opened this up just a few minutes earlier or a minute earlier, and you would have seen that Pacific time zone and Alaska time zone would have actually had the same time until the time change. So as each time zone actually waits its turn to either end daylight saving time or begin daylight saving time, there is overlap in time. So here what we're looking at is when in, in the end of daylight saving time or even um, in March when we change the clocks ahead, um, the time change always starts with the east coast and works over to the west coast. So here at the end of daylight saving time we would have seen that EST would have changed first at 2 a.m. It would have went to 1 a.m. and central time would have been at 1 a.m. So these two would have shared um, time zone at that time or the, shared the same time for one hour and likewise in between each time zone change, we would have seen that. I wish I would have brought that up earlier for you to see. But one thing I do want to mention is you can use timeanddate.com for your uh, international meeting planning. They have really good apps here um, that you can use. And also this app that I'm using here is called World Clocks. And I downloaded this from google.com. You can see chrome.google.com. You can use this app in the Chrome browser and um, of course the the page doesn't want to render when I want to show it to you. So anyway you can go to the Chrome app store and in Chrome you can use this this um, extension. It It's pretty handy. You can see all the different time zones and compare all the different time zones. So anyway um, I hope this video has helped to gain some insight into how the time changes in the U.S., especially at the end of Daylight Savings Time, the first Sunday of November, which happens to be November 1st in 2015. If you'd like to know, have uh, interaction with us here at Authentic Journeys, get to know a little bit about the kind of services, cross-cultural training and business consultation we provide for distributed remote teams, definitely look at our website at authenticjourneys.info. Get in touch with us through our website. We're also on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So thank you for your time. This is Jennifer Kumar signing off. Thank you.